I'm Heather from Hey Booktubes and today is my favorite books of 2021. I'm so excited for this list. I'm going to go in chronological order and you have already seen my favorite new to me authors and these lists are not necessarily matchy matchy and I think that's kind of interesting and I just loved every single one of these. I already have my favorite novellas of the year video. I'll link that. Um, so these are full length novels. And again, I obviously read a lot of novellas. So the novellas are just as worthy. I just give them their own video. So I'm super, super excited for this video. And let me know if you've read any and if you have any recommendations similar to these because obviously I loved them. Number one, no surprise to you if you watch my channel, is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. This is A Gathering of Dragons. Number one is a fantasy romance series that is both heavy on the fantasy world building and also on the couple focused romance throughout the book. And I loved the whole series, but the first book does remain my favorite. I read this in January. This was a <laughs> peer pressure pick, but also, Naima from Naima's Reads was my Secret Santa last year in a romance booktuber Secret Santa exchange. She gave me this book and I did a vlog reading it and it was just the most enjoyable experience. I loved it so much. We have a disabled princess who has been locked in a tower her whole life, but she is incredibly intelligent and knows more than she would if circumstances were different and she were locked in a tower. I won't tell you why that is, you'll find out in the book. And then we have a general warlord who his parents were killed and he blames her for it. And he plans on killing her, but she talks him out of it and explains that that would actually be doing her father who killed his parents a favor instead she's actually the rightful ruler so if he marries her and or impregnates her she would be able to take power away from her father and that would be kind of the worst thing that could happen to him and then you can kill him so win 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 is very hate to love she actually loves him and he hates her he thinks that she's a murderess <laughs> And he's also incredibly stubborn and also in his society, being a liar is the worst thing that you can be. So if he says he's going to rip out her tongue, if she tries to say that wasn't her fault one more time, then he would have to follow through on that. And it is a wild premise. I loved the goddesses and mythology in this. I loved the side characters. There is some pretty significant content warnings obviously death of parents rape of his mother there's the death of a horse he's not nice to her so there's a lot of kind of risk for her especially at the beginning also there's some other content warnings that would be very spoilery but there's some dark content warnings so be aware do go with caution if you actually already read adult fantasy you should be totally fine but know that this is not light and fluffy while still being a lovely relationship. <laughs> I loved it so much. I loved both characters. Did he take forever to get on board? Yes. Was this more slow burn than I tend to reach for? Yes. Was I sweating and screaming and crying? <laughs> yes. And it was so, so good. Next I have Return of the Thief, which is the Queen's Thief series number six by Megan Whelan Turner. This is a young adult fantasy series where the first book follows the thief as they are on a journey to steal an unsealable thing. And then it really expands from there where you end up following all these different countries as they kind of fight the world power of the time who is trying to take over their small landmass where you have these rival countries who need to bond together in order to survive. And that's really where the books end up going and you follow many different characters and each book is kind of told from a different perspective. So while you do have these main characters, a lot of times you're getting the whole book from a perspective of a side character that you know next to nothing about and they don't know the main characters and you only have the information that they have basically so even though you know what those people are like they don't and you're getting everything from their perspective and there are so many different things at the end of each book where things that you thought weren't important at all were actually hugely important and I love it it's a beautiful writing style it's a book series that I started as a young teenager and have been waiting for the finale since then 
and I turned 30 this year and it finally came and it was so satisfying and worth the wait and the entire series is fantastic. And I would actually say that the first book is the weakest and it's not weak, but it is perhaps the most boring. <laughs> Without being boring, it's hard to explain, but just know if you like the first book, you'll probably love the rest of the series. So it's fantastic. I would love for each and every single person on the face of the earth to read it. <laughs> it really is that much of a lifetime favorite for me. Then I have Take a Hint, Danny Brown, which is The Brown Sisters, number two by Talia Hibbert. This is a contemporary romance. And we have Danny, who is bi and is a witch and is a alpha and is a professor and she's fantastic. The opening page of this book, already greatness. And then we have Zaf who is a security guard at the university and loves her and is a romantic, has bad anxiety. So you have prickly Danny falling for sweet, charming cinnamon roll Zaf where they both have their issues but they really complement each other so well. They do fake dating for charity basically and it's just a delight. It's a delight. Talia Hibbert's writing style is really so lovely. I love and laugh at so many little things stuck in the book and I just really 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 enjoy it. If you want something light and happy but also with substance to it, the Brown Sister series just an absolute delight. Next I have If She Says Yes by Tasha L. Harrison. I've not shut up about this book since I read it and thank you to Thaney from Thaney's Thoughts for randomly posting about it on Twitter and me who who knows why was like yes and I one clicked it and read it that night which is so incredibly rare <laughs> and it was so hot so good, so caring. It's not even like super heavy on the smut. It's just the sex scenes were top tier gold. So we have a premise that wouldn't even normally interest me all that much. And when I tell you that this is peak, peak content in this trope, you should read it. So we have a 32 year old man who his best friend is getting married. And so the wedding is being hosted at his best friend's mom's house. And he has had a huge crush on her since he was about 19. Her husband recently died. Her husband died before she could divorce him. And he had a mistress and a child with the mistress and her son wants to have a relationship with his little brother. And so the mistress and the son are invited to the wedding. She's very gracious and kind, but obviously is having some issues with this. And Tomas's best friend is like, hey, I really need you to take care of my mom this weekend. I know it's difficult for her. If you could just take care of anything that she needs, that would be great. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can do that and takes it much farther <laughs> than I'm sure his friend anticipated. And she is 55 and just the most caring, sweet person who really does everything for other people while neglecting herself. And Tomas is submissive while also just wanting to take care of her in any way that she will let him. It is perfection. It is so good. I literally joined Tasha L. Harrison's Patreon because she's doing scenes after this book and I'm paying for it monthly <laughs> and it's worth it. I don't even join Patreons because like I can't afford to join all the ones that I would like to of like everybody that I like so I tend just not to but she suckered me in and here I am. What's very interesting about this book is that you never get the conflict with the best friend. The best friend never finds out and you have a happy for now situation and it is just the hottest thing. And I just want them to be happy forever. That's all I want out of life because I love these characters so freaking much. Next I had The Cleaner, which is Professionals number nine by Jessica Gaziella. This is my favorite series by Jessica Gaziella. And this one is probably my favorite installment of it this year. I just really love this one. I've been wanting Finn's story since I was introduced to him. He has severe OCD, which is a lot of it is 
post-traumatic stress and he just he has to clean has to clean it's not that he can't be around any sort of mess but just he has to clean and because of that he is the perfect person to clean crime scenes that the fixer agency has taken on so if somebody disappeared if somebody is killed if something needs trace evidence removed he is your guy However, we have a true crime podcaster in the town who has noticed that there are many different crime scenes that were just abnormally clean and there's too many for it to be a coincidence. So she is actually caught on to him and the hacker for the fixer agency has noticed this about the true crime podcaster. So she tells Finn about it and she says hey you need to switch up your cleaner I know you can't but try try small changes we need to not be so obvious because somebody's on to you and so he arranges a chance meeting with this woman who has caught on to him and is just head over heels right away and she thinks that the crime scenes indicate a serial killer so it's a fun time. The representation in this and also the anxiety of the dog. <laughs> just all of it I really thought was lovely and I loved getting to see them get their happily ever after. They had such interesting stories and jobs and backgrounds. It was really just one of the most unique romances in that sense that I read this year and I absolutely freaking loved it. So there's that. <laughs> Next I have Magic Triumphs which is Kate Daniels number 10 by Alona Andrews. After starting the series three years ago I finally finished the last three books this year and then promptly started a reread for the Kate Daniels read along with Steph and Megan and I have had so much fun with that but I had to pick the last book of the series to go on this list. This is a urban fantasy romance series where we have Kate who begins the series as a middle of the road mercenary. She's not so good that you would notice her and she's not so bad that she can't get the job done. And she ends up searching for the murderer of her guardian and runs into the beast lord of Atlanta, which is Curran. He is a lion shifter, but not just any lion shifter. He's like a, um, why can't I think of the word? An old timey <laughs> lion shifter? It's not primeval. It's not primate. It's something else. <laughs> I don't know. An old, a, a prehistoric, <laughs> I think is what I'm searching for. So he's like a gray lion with stripes and he's like extremely large. He's one of the kind of original shifters, old magic. And they don't hit it off at all. He thinks that she is just a attention whore and she thinks he's an a-hole. And they have the most lovely romance it takes course over 10 books although like from books four and five on they are a couple so it's not like this constant oh, I can't believe you guys are taking a backward step again it's not like that the first few books are kind of more turbulent with their relationship or lack of relationship but basically once they're a couple they're a couple they're solid they love each other more than anything else and will do anything for each other while also still having limits and having issues with some of the things that each other does and it's just absolutely beautiful. On top of that you have multiple storylines in every single book. You have so much interesting mythology in this series because magic has come to the world again. You have tech waves and magic waves. Whenever there's magic waves you can run into any sort of creature and belief is a really big part of magic. So all of the different religions and any belief and your own ancestry all of those things can really manifest in magical creatures and curses. Belief is very powerful and can actually change the reality of that being or that magic. And so gods and goddesses are also important and it's so great because it's not just like, oh look it's the Greek and Roman gods again. No, it's not like that at all. 
and you just have mythology from all over the world because of the people who believe in it even though you're basically taking place in Atlanta. You can run into anything and it's just the most fascinating series. Even on the rereads it's like you can't remember everything that happened because so much happens but in each book it doesn't feel like too much at all. And the series ended in a way that I just thought was so satisfying and really true to the nature of the series. You do get the HEA, you have your happily ever after because it is a romance. And I love all of the characters in this series <laughs> so much. And it's just truly been one of the most enjoyable experiences of my year. And finishing the series for the first time was a highlight. Next I have Run Posey Run by Kate C. Wells. I do want to shout out Izzy from Happy For Now because I read not only Kate C. Wells primarily because of her, it was also Katie Robert was like, hey, this is amazing, but then Izzy loved it too and that was really kind of a stamp of approval and Naima loved it. But Izzy introduced me to so many beloved authors and books this year. I really do have to give her credit for being a strong influence on my reading this year. But Run Posey Run is a mafia standalone romance about the money guy in the mafia and he is a legit psychopath. He does not have emotions and he has a longtime girlfriend and he finds out that she's cheating on him and he throws her out and kind of reveals his true nature and then is mad at himself for throwing her out. He should have kept her and just punished her here because he's mad that she's not where she's supposed to be and she is someone who desperately needs love. She's been in a long string of bad mafia relationships within this organization because she needs love, some of them abusive, and when he throws her out she no longer has his protection and somebody is going to get rid of her so she is on the run and she disappears a little too well and he can't find her and he is frustrated. They then have a cat and mouse game and when he does find her and drag her back home, he's thrilled that she now knows that he's a psychopath and he doesn't have to fake uh, caring for her. But he also wants her to go back to her sunshiny carefree self that she was before and she's like, no dude. <laughs> and they have such an interesting romance. The contrast between their POVs, especially at the beginning, is wild and watching him actually grow to care for her while also trying to get her to care for him again is just a wild ride. I kind of love reading about psychopaths and sociopaths, especially when they're obsessed with one person and I just love it and this was done so well. It was my first introduction to Casey Wells and I read a ton more of her books this year an absolute delight but also a dark romance so you know beware <laughs> next i have dial a for aunties by jesse q sutanto and i loved this book and i think part of why i love this book is because i was told exactly what to expect and that really helped my expectations to know what i was going into and i laughed more i think in this book than any other book this year i laughed out loud so many times it was so much fun reading it was it wild was it over the top was it ridiculous yes did i enjoy every freaking second yes i did so we have a asian american and she is part of a wedding planning company with her aunts and mother and there's like a lot of familial issues that have kind of caused her to think that she has to help her family out no matter what and i really liked the author's note in this i thought that her choices made sense based on the author's note i really enjoyed it her meddling mother <laughs> whom she loves has set her up for a blind date she goes on the blind date and the guy tries to assault her nothing happens other than a scary you know he's trying to take her to another location thing but then she accidentally kills him <laughs> and her aunts and mother help her get rid of the body and they have a huge wedding the next day. This happens late at night. They have a huge wedding the next day at this big resort and the body accidentally goes to the wedding with them. And it turns out that res the resort is owned by her college boyfriend who she loved more than anything but felt she couldn't move across the country with because of her family and didn't want to have him give up his job so she just broke up with him without explaining anything. 
but she has always loved him and he's there and the body's there and her aunt and mother well being charming are not the most helpful <laughs> Then there's other things going on at the wedding. Like seriously, so much happens. But when I tell you that it's ridiculous, over the top family drama, not very heavy on the romance. All they do is kiss and you know, it's kind of just a side thing, but it's very sweet. It's more of just a ridiculous caper where they're trying to keep this body from being found. <laughs> it just it all goes wrong you're gonna have to suspend your disbelief okay none of it is realistic but when i tell you that it was an absolute hysterical delight that just made me laugh and smile and enjoy it so much again not heavy on the romance it's not actually a mystery they already know who did it they did it <laughs> it's just a family drama with a lot of interesting things with the um, I think I was Indonesian. It's been a while now. Wedding and just, it was so good. It was so good. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It's just a ridiculous delight. Read it if that sounds good. Then I have The Obelisk Gate, which is the Broken Earth Trilogy number two by N.K. Jemison. This is an adult fantasy trilogy. You absolutely do have to read it in order. But the second book was my favorite in the trilogy. I did give the whole trilogy five stars, but this one just was my personal favorite. This is a world with cataclysmic events and you have origins who kind of have earth magic. They can work with the earth, but they are abhorred and treated as less than. They're viewed as dangerous. They're viewed as not human humans and they really have a horrible situation happening right they're either schooled and kept in line or they are killed those are really the only options or they can hide but at the first slip up they are killed and this is just so fascinating we follow a middle-aged mother and her husband has killed one of her children because he found out that he was an origin at the beginning of the book. So huge content warning for that. I don't feel like it's a spoiler. First of all, it happens in the first chapter. And secondly, you need to know that I feel like going in and just be aware there's a lot of heavy loss and loss of children. So be aware of that. If that's something you can't read, then you're not going to enjoy this series. But it is so interesting. You're not supposed to understand what's going on at the beginning of the first book. And even in the second and third books, you're still not having the full picture, but you do have reveals. It is incredibly written. It is really a very interesting look into humanity and just what you might be like if the world was a different place and also very insightful commentary onto people's prejudice and hate and the things that we will use to decide that someone else is not as important as we are or it's okay to treat them like that because of xyz and I just loved reading it. I loved reading it for the Broken Earth Trilogy read along on Beautifully Bookish Bethany's channel. Talking about the books with everybody really I think elevated my experience. It also helped me to read them back to back each month instead of putting it off and it was an absolute highlight of the year. Next I have The Tyra Alpha's Rejected Mate by Kate C. Wells. This is the only author who showed up on this list twice and I'm not sorry. Okay. <laughs> I loved this book so much. I am not a fan of rejected mate shifter books. I don't like it. I like when the mate connection is something that draws you together, not the primary conflict of the book. I don't like rejected mates. But I was like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm reading this book and I read it as soon as it was released and it did not disappoint. It was so worthwhile. So at the beginning we do have kind of a brutal rejection scene. He rejects her in front of the entire pack. She's disabled. She's weak. She's never shifted before. This is her very first shift and she knows that he's her mate and he rejects her and she's in so much pain and agony and the witch of the pack takes her part of the bond away so that she is not in such agony and leaves his alone. He is not being mean or cruel. He thinks that he is doing her service. He does not believe that she is his mate. If she was his mate, he would know. 
Um, but also his wolf won't let him leave her alone. And his father was a dictator and rights for the women and children especially just were horrible. So he's done a lot to bring them forward. But at the same time, they're still behind the times. The women, the single women aren't allowed to have cell phones. They all have to live together in this one house. They're not allowed to go anywhere or do anything. And unbeknownst to him for like the last several years, she and her, all the other single women have been running a illegal like honey <laughs> business at the local market and just so much goodness in this book. And I loved that she wasn't the strong alpha wolf that he thought that he would need, but she was exactly what he needed. And he loved her once he figured everything out he loved her so much and um she really helped him to be a better alpha and i just freaking loved it it was so good lastly i've yours insatiably by avita vice this is the hunger duet number two so the first book is a short and it is their first night together it's called feed if you've watched my channel you've heard me talk about it many times because i absolutely loved it and then this is the sequel and it is a full length novel that takes place after that night. And we have Pi who is a death hawk moth fairy. I could be wrong. It doesn't <laughs> spare me from the moth um, types. Apparently I just can't do it. But he's a fairy and he is non-binary, gender fluid, uses pronouns fluidly and is chaos and goth and an artist and Averin, I think is her name. Don't, details are not important. <laughs> she is very uptight, she's curvy, she is a succubus, but she's hiding that she's a succubus and there's still a lot of prejudice against succubuses and she needs to feed on sexual energy to live, right? And so she does that through a um, service and he is actually one of the providers in the service and so he shows up at her door in feed and they don't know that they're going to see each other they could deny each other but she decides to go ahead with it and he has a huge thing for her and she hates him <laughs> so much and they're co-workers and he they decide to not continue the relationship she could actually get fired because she is kind of loaned to that business from a different business but she is suppressing her succubus side she doesn't know anything about the monster nightlife in the city and so he is showing her that as a friend who wants to get in her pants <laughs> so so good i loved his gender fluidness but also he was the dominant in the relationship and she's so prickly and so uptight, but she just releases to him when he takes over. And it is absolute just fantasticness. I loved everything about these two. I loved their happy for now. I loved kind of just all the things with their dynamic and the way that it all played out. I just loved it. I loved it so, so much. And Avita Vice is a new favorite author and I just was so thrilled to finally read a full length. This is their first ever full length book. And I think that they were nervous and I think I was nervous because they do shorts and novellas so well, but writing shorts and novellas well is a skill and not everybody can do it. And obviously writing a full length story is different. And the fact that they pulled both off to such perfection made me so happy. <laughs> it made me so happy. I really, 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 really loved it. And I think that's a good note to end the video on. So these were my favorite books of the year. They were the highlight. I read like 280, 90 books, somewhere in there. And these were my favorites. So they were uh, well worth your read. Please read them. They're absolute, absolutely fantastic delights that I just really want you all to read. So let me know if any of these sound interesting. Honestly, wildly different genres and subgenres. But um, I would love to know if you plan on reading these or if you have or any of the things. Would love to know. Please comment and tell me. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.